All right, guys, I'm Nicolette, and today Brian and I are here with Jackie Maddox. She is the founder and president of Women in Electronics, and she's going to talk to us today a little bit about the industry in general, women's roles, men's roles, and uh, we are also going to talk a little bit about the future. So thank you so much, Jackie, for joining us today. We are excited to have you with us. Well, I'm honored to be here. Thank you for inviting me. So why don't you kick us off by telling us a little bit about your journey and, and kind of how you got to Women in Electronics? Well, um, I feel like people might have heard this by now, but I'll just get a, a, a short uh, rendition. I was in the electronic component industry just starting my career. I actually started in college um, and I worked for a rep company and I just uh, worked my way up. I ended up loving, really falling in love with the industry um, just because of the people. I think the one thing we have in the electronic component industry that I would say is a differentiator is that the the people, um, the relationships, it's a very relationship orientated industry, or the way our channel is set up. So I just really, um, I wasn't a technical person when I came into the industry, but I had the capability to learn. Um, and I just ended up really um, enjoying the people and the relationships. And um, that's how I ended up just kind of getting my foundation in the industry. And then I took off for a number of years and here I am, I came back to the industry I uh, call home. Well, you know, it's interesting because this industry, there are so many people in this industry that have so much passion for what they actually do. It's, it's pretty crazy when you think about like what we're doing and the passion that comes out of so many people in this industry. Mm -hmm. No, and I think that we have amazing leaders. So that's one thing that I'll preface this conversation to say, you know, we have a lot of advancements to make for sure. Um, and, and especially women in our industry. But if you look at the leaders, um, there's a lot of reason to be passionate because we, I believe we have some of the best leaders in, across any industry. We have the ability right here, right now to be game changers, to actually change the course of an industry, to open the opportunities for people the, the existing leaders, um, they're willing to do that and they want to do that. And everybody's worried about succession and just we care about the industry so much that people are willing to do what is necessary for the industry. So um, I just want to say we're, we're just we feel so blessed and so grateful to be right here right now at this day and time. So aside from the fact that you are a woman, why a focus on women in electronics? What was there, was there any sort of motivator behind that aside from, you know, the fact that you're a woman? <laughs> <laughs> well, I will have to say that when women electron electronics started, it wasn't kind of the popular thing to do. This wasn't started um, because we just felt like, oh, you know, let's get some women's things going. <laughs> it really started because of a need, truly a need. And um, there's a lot of women in our industry, but not a lot of women in uh, decision-making positions. So there is a need. There um, are a lot of issues to address. We are not nearly where we need to be as far as inclusion. Um, we're trying to gather a lot of our own data, but um, it looks like we're about 8% percent of women in leadership type of positions like decision making roles so that's just not okay it's we're not there yet there's way too much talent there's way too much wasted talent um and I, and the men are trying to come alongside us and understand too I, I think it, it's just a matter of education I just don't think um, anybody has really put forth the effort and to bring the awareness and the data and the resources um, to address this type of thing. Some, you know, issues are systemic, right? So we just need the thinkers at the table. We just need everyone to come together as an industry and unite, not divide. So even though we're women in electronics, we have so many male supporters. So if you care about women and you respect women, and you want to work alongside women, you're, you know, welcome. And women are like, <laughs> part of the team. So it's not just women, but we do have to address the fact that as women, we do face certain barriers that our male counterparts don't face. So we're here to bring those issues to light and to talk about them in a way that's very professional and uniting instead of dividing. I like that. 
So you mentioned, right, you have a lot of male supporters. I know Michael Knight is a big supporter of you guys, right? And how is that How is that sort of, how are you guys working alongside, you? not just Michael Knight, but having men integrate into women in engineering? Well, here's the thing is Michael Knight is just a very rare and amazing human being, right? Um, he came alongside of us from the beginning. Um, Michael Knight just kind of, beats to his own drum right and and I love that about him and we're so blessed because he had the strength and just kind of the wherewithal to decide he was going to come alongside of us because it was something he found valuable now I have to say with Michael he's very data driven he's probably one of the smartest guys we all know that exists in this industry and it's for a reason he's very well read and he respects data. So when we first started, it wasn't like Michael Knight just got on board beating his drum. Um, I sent him some information and I kept feeding him data. And that is what fuels Michael is data. So we started researching it. Um, I'll give him that credit. He didn't hop on board just to get on board with some new initiative. He really <laughs> wanted to make sure that um, this was a valuable um, initiative for him to get behind. So it took him a little while. He started doing a lot of research. Everything I sent him, he started checking out. And he was like, wow, now I can't stop looking at all this stuff. So then <laughs> he got behind it more because it made sense and the data supported what we were saying. And, you know, so you combine that with the fact that we do have succession um, issues, we do have talent issues in the industry. You combine all that together and it became something that thankfully we're so honored to have him on our council, along with people like Phil Gallagher and Lynn Terrell and Mino Sethna and Kimberly Appleton. We have so many, uh, Linda Johnson, Alan Bird. We have amazing leaders. And, you know, I think I wake up every morning kind of pinching myself going, oh my gosh, thank you <laughs> um, that these people are supporting us because we, we really are going to thrive uh, with their support behind us. You mentioned uh, talent issues and, and I'm wondering, are you referring to um, there are just not enough women with the correct skills or to, to fulfill certain positions that we need to raise more awareness to getting women involved at a, at a, at a younger uh, point. Is that, is that kind of where you're going with that, Jackie? Oh my gosh. So I could probably do a whole podcast on just this question. Um, so there's so many elements in that, but I'll just say, the existing talent that we have in our industry, there's a lot of, um, say, mature talent that yeah. is very capable, <laughs> very capable. Um, most of the issues are confidence issues, is, is um, women tend to look at a job rec and say, well, I can do eight of the 10 requirements oh, well, I'm not qualified. I have to work on the other two. <laughs> Men typically will go, ah, 60%, I'm good. Yeah, I'll learn the rest. And that's awesome. That's what you should do. So a lot of it is education with the women to say, hey, trust yourself. You can learn this. You don't have to be a perfectionist. You can learn as you go along. So that's part of it is confidence. And we're finding no matter what level you are, no matter what position. As a woman, we all face this confidence issue, typically. Um, it's, it's very common. So we're trying to do some education on that, also educating the men for them to know, you know, sometimes you have to nudge that woman a little more. You have to kind of get her a little bit more um, confident in, in, in herself. So as we're bringing more of this to light, as we're doing more trainings, we're finding more and more women are reaching out of their comfort zones. They are going for those next level positions. We need that to happen in this industry. Um, so that's one part of it. Uh, the other part is, yes, we have to reach down sooner and farther. So what's happening is we just don't have enough rising talent to fill the leaders that will be leaving in the next, say, five to seven years. We have a lot of mature leaders, but we don't really see the pipeline coming up is who's taking all these positions. So we need to, in organizations, start reaching down sooner. 
Um, one of the things that is valuable with women in electronics that we're so proud of is that it doesn't matter if your company is not giving you leadership development. Um, and this is the one of the number one areas of deficit in training in organizations. Typically, the top level gets it, but not a customer service person or inside sales person. Um, so we offer all that. You can be a member of Women Electronics and get all that leadership development. Um, we're stressing business acumen training. We're, we're doing a lot of things to try to prepare those women for those next level positions to be prepared and be ready and be confident. Now, you guys also recently started a student, you, to Nicolette's point, like younger talent. You guys recently started a student program, correct? Yeah, so this is a pretty big effort um, that we started. So we are partnered with um, University of Irvine, California, UCI, and um, we are starting a collegiate effort. So what we're doing is we're going to, this is just our first pilot, and we're going to model this and take it across the country. But um, we are working with them on an industry level. So we're approaching them and trying to recruit the college students more presenting our industry, not just one company in the industry. So of course, our sponsor companies benefit because when they come in, we they see their job recs first. Um, so we have this amazing relationship going. We have a lot set up for the fall to do some industry recruiting. Um, so we're really excited about it, but we're going to look at this as a pilot and we're going to perfect it as best we can. And then we're going to start taking that and modeling it across the country and trying to target schools that actually um, are focused on diversity and inclusion. So UCI, 50% of their population is diverse. So we want to start targeting schools that have a diverse nature. So you... I want to go back to leadership, and that's kind of how we started, um, and talking about the, the leaders. Now, in your opinion, what is a way that, so what would you define as great leadership, and where have you seen the industry kind of go, and where has it come, where are we now, where do we stand, where do we need to go? Oh my gosh, that's that's another that's a heavy uh, question. I'm question. sorry, I'm, I'm telling you have great <laughs> questions. So okay, so if, if, if this is something that I kind of study every day, I actually get up pretty early every day. Everyone who works with me, know, unfortunately, knows that. Um, I really believe that the face of leadership, um, as far as what it takes to be successful moving forward, is so different. It is such a drastic change compared to what we've seen evolve over the years. So it used to be you would consider soft skills to be empathy, compassion, understanding, collaboration. Those are essential now. <laughs> if you are a leader who cannot demonstrate um, understanding, collaboration, compassion, um, it's just not the place for you anymore. The, this has changed a lot. Our world took a drastic change. <clears throat> and I think what got us here won't get us there. So I would say that if leaders aren't constantly growing and developing themselves, it, it, it's really going to be hard to continue um, to be successful. So yes, will they thrive and, and, and ride it out for a certain period of time? Yes, but it, it's not sustaining. So it, it just appears that in the modern day, um, self-reflection, awareness, um, growing yourself as a leader, being better personally and professionally is what it takes to now go forward. I just don't know that we've always had such the focus on personal development and growth, but that is really the key to success moving forward. So do you see more companies now focusing, because so many focus on business development, right? And developing, you know, the, these leaders from a business perspective. Do you see more companies focusing on helping them grow from a personal perspective? you know, the personal development? Well, you know, it's really hard to say. I think them aligning with initiatives like Women Electronics is a demonstration of that. Um, I do think a lot more companies have a focus on, say, life balance, which you know, there's debatable if that's even the correct terminology, but that's what we use. Um, <clears throat> but I do believe, here's the message that I have. Um, our next chapter meeting is about authentic leadership. It's the power of authentic leadership. So what we do is we have these chapter meetings and we come to the table 
and we talk about leadership type of issues and we just roll up our sleeves and we try to talk through these issues. So I believe it's a matter of being your true authentic self, bringing that to the table. What does that mean to you? What does it mean to others? What does it look like? And really being authentic to me is a matter of being more what you're for than what you're against. I think we live in a time now where too many people are focused on what they're against, uh, fighting against something. But what we're about at Women Electronics is what are you fighting for? So this has to do with all this life balance and all these things we talk about. What are the values of the company that you work for? What are your values? Does this align? Um, so you can't get to that proper life balance Unless you're actually being your authentic self, does the company you work for match your values? Um, are, are you operating in your, are, are you lying, showing up every day at work? Are you doing something you actually don't like to be doing? Are you, you know, I always say to women too, when you come to the table, if you have something to say and you hold it back, that's like a form of lying. Like you need to be able to bring your authentic self. And if you don't match that culture, you, you should be going somewhere else. So we need to be having these discussions about being authentic. You have to do that first before you can get into all that life balance, because you'll never have balance if you're not starting with truth. The rule in my house is omitting information is lying. It yeah. counts. Yes. <laughs> That's the rule in my house. Yes, lying okay. by omission. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm guilty of that one around here. I don't yes. tell you how much that Target bill was. That's for sure. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so true. But you know, I think that here, here's what the issue is. The issue is, I think that there, um, a lot of times in the spirit of wanting to get along, we withhold information, right? We don't want to bring up something because we think somebody will be upset. Now, this is not just professionally, this is personally as well. Like think of your marriages or your relationship with your family, your kids. Um, but if you're withholding information, it is a form of lying. So are you willing to talk to your spouse and have those tough conversations? Are you willing to talk to your boss? You know, in a way that's very respectable and honorable. These are some of the tough conversations we get into with women electronics because I think the codependency or the feeling of, oh, I'm just not going to cause a conflict, you're actually part of the problem when you do that. So um, these are just the tough conversations we all need to be having and be aligned uh, properly. So um, other than that, to circle back around and answer your question about life balance and companies um, dedicating resources to this. Um, I do think that companies are starting to have awareness with this. Is it being dedicated in the right way? I don't know, but I think at least it's on the table. At least it's on the table. And I just hope that if it is being done, it's being done responsibly and within the values of that organization. No, do you have a, an idea of what some of these things are that may be in the workplace um, women aren't saying something about, and I don't mean like your traditional um, issues that women encounter, but specifically in this industry, does it come to like a knowledge thing? Like I, I don't, I might not be right in what I'm saying. So I, I know that's something that, um, you know, I, I, please, I can go back to kindergarten with that. You know, I was afraid to get the answer wrong. So mm -hmm. I didn't say anything at all. Right. Unfortunately, for everyone else right. I now don't shut up but then it was a problem <laughs> it, it was a problem so is that kind of the it's, is it a knowledge thing and a, back to confidence I guess then oh my gosh Nicolette you and I could talk all day long I love your questions um okay so this is another thing I just put it out in our we weekly today and I'm going to probably do an article on this but you're right in the sense of we have tended to get stuff down. Maybe it's a systemic issue. I don't know. But women tend to not want to cause conflict. Or if you feel like you're going to say something that goes against the grain, you kind of hold it back. And you you just don't want to go against what the, the group is doing. Um, there's that element for sure. And that just all that is, is, is um, education to know you're doing it and to overcome that. So there's there's a lot of tools and there's a lot of ways, but I really believe um, I've spent a lot of time in reflection and in, in, in listening to a lot of the podcasts we do, talking to mentors, 
Um, and I really think there's a difference. And I think we have to start educating people on this. There's a, a fine line between a spirit of excellence and perfectionism. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of women come from this perfectionism standpoint. That comes from a place of uh, pride, ego, uh, not wanting to make a mistake because of how you look, image. That's a very low level. And I have to say, you know, I'm one of anybody. I've, I've struggled with that in my past. Um, but as far as a spirit of excellence, that's different. That's just saying, I want to bring my best foot forward no matter what I'm doing. I'm going to always look for ways to improve. I'm going to put myself out there and be authentic. Um, I, I'm going to bring my best to the table. I am um, execution oriented. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but there's a difference. It's a fine line. Um, spirit of excellence is collaboration, team building, um, non-judgmental, um, in the spirit of being able to be corrected. I would say for women too, that fear of failure and the, um, if somebody corrects you, it's okay. It, it, it's just an opportunity to improve. Uh, why do we have such a problem with that? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I would say if we just get education on these things. And I say that from a place of, you know, I've struggled with all of this myself. You know, I've had to overcome a lot in my life um, to be able to lead this organization in a confident and effective manner. So everything that we, 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 we train about, you know, I probably had to grow and develop myself so I, I can speak from a place of having been through it. So what would you consider then, you know, with all of the technology that you know, we're in the uh, innovation is like an understatement in my opinion for what happens here in this industry. So with, with everything advancing so quickly, um, where do you see the industry as a whole um, needing mm -hmm. to catch up? Where is it lacking? Um, you know, how is it changing how organizations operate internally? What's, what's going on here? Well, I would say that as far as technology, Michael Knight's your best bet to talk about uh, technology. <laughs> we yeah. love Michael. <laughs> we love Michael. We're, yeah, we're always, yes, we're always talking with him. <laughs> yes, he, he'll give you up to date. And, and, and people like, say, Lynn Terrell, you should have her on your program. Um, she would be awesome to talk about that. I can only say um, we have a slogan for this year. It's called um, Advancing Cultural Innovation. We are not culturally advanced in this industry. We don't have enough, um, we, we kind of overuse the term diversity, but it's really inclusion that we should be talking about more. Um, we're, we're not there yet. So there's, there's no blame game, there's no fault, there's no pointing fingers or whatever, we're just moving forward. But that's an area that I can speak to more than the technology. <clears throat> Is this the cultural um, advancement of our industry. So we need more diversity of all types, you know, gender, age, ethnic, you name it. We do need more diversity in the industry, especially in leadership positions, um, but we're working on it. And my other message would be a lot of people don't hop in with the whole DEI um, initiative. And by the way, DEI is diversity equity and inclusion. And I'll circle back around because I think the equity conversation is really critical to have, but there's no perfection. So we talked about perfectionism before, but part of women in electronics is not to say to organizations, um, you need to be perfect or, oh my gosh, well, look what you're doing over here. It's you just hop in wherever you are and you make a commitment to progress. That's all it is. <clears throat> and I don't think that there's one uh, company that exists that's perfect in this area. I, I think it, it, it's mindset. The whole diversity conversation, the inclusion conversation is all about mindset. It's all about growth. It's all about we can all rise together versus I got this position over you. Now you're out and I'm in. That 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 is a wrong mindset. So the data supports that the more inclusion we have, the money thrives, the more the industry grows and expands. So it's an expansion mindset. So I just wanted to uh, point that out, but then to circle back around on the equity conversation, because this is really critical and it's, again, sometimes people don't like having these conversations, but this is, we like to have them. Um, 
you know, equality has to do with just giving everybody equal rights. You know, hey, we're all sitting here and, you know, we all get three gumballs, <laughs> right? We all have the same. But equity has to do with um, what is most fair. So what is equal isn't always what's the most fair. So equity has to do with, okay, you know, Brian, you get three gumballs, but because you had to give one to somebody who really needed it, we're going to give you an extra one. <laughs> I mean, it's like a stupid example, but there are people who come to the table who actually need a little more um, than others. So that's what the equity conversation is about. Not everybody comes to the table having had equal opportunity. So um, when you hear DEI, it's typically diversity, equity, inclusion. And how does that play a role in, in the way that, um, so for example, in the way that I guess, um, for example, women, right, are, are elevated in the industry um, or could be or should be? Mm -hmm. how, how do you, you know, how, how is that connected? Well, okay, so this is a great question, too, because let's use mentorship, for example. Okay, mentorship is critical to career advancement and also in gaining sponsorships, right? Sponsors open doors for you. So um, women typically haven't had the same opportunity for mentorship for a lot of reasons. First of all, there's only in our industry less than 8% in leadership positions, <laughs> right? And a lot of it in a male-dominated industry is the guys are off golfing and doing a lot of things um, and the women are just not there. So th they actually are missing the opportunity. Men mentor each other throughout so many different things they're doing. So if you use just that as an example, you know, there hasn't been that opportunity. So say you have a woman who's an, a, a great candidate and we're not into tokenism. You should only hire the best person who's qualified <laughs> for the position, not giving somebody something just because they're a woman. Please don't ever do that. But you're hiring somebody that um, is qualified, but potentially has not had that mentorship at that same level, you would give in extra mentorship. You would provide extra training in areas that potentially she would need. Um, it's providing resources, right, where needed. And then you will find that once you do that, you will gain so much more, you know, on the back end. So that's what equity is. It's just providing the extra resources to fill some gaps. Okay. I understand. All right. So the heavy loaded question. Brian, do you have anything before I hit oh, over no, no, no. where we see things going? All right. Brian's been very <laughs> quiet. He's just sitting there like, oh. Me, no, and no, I've got to be honest. I, I always, I always, um, we t I typically stay away from conversations about women, and I think it's because I don't always identify with right. women. I know that's that's very yeah. absurd, but I I don't. I I, I tend to not. Um, I, I I don't know. Maybe it's just how I was raised. Maybe it's because I've gotten to work alongside Brian for eleven years, and he's pretty kick ass. I don't know, but I, I don't I don't experience a, a lot of a lot of this in, you know, in the past decades. So it's hard for me. So I'm like, really? Like I could say whatever I want around here, you know, I don't know. I never felt that, you know? Um, yeah. But. And I think even in mine and Nicolette's relationship, you know, Nicolette, you know, when, when we worked together, I originally hired her and, you know, I feel like I mentored her. Do you know what I mean? In, in many ways, like, you know, we, we grew up in some ways together, you know? But well, there's a lot of validity, Jackie, to some of, I mean, how many times has Brian, I mean, especially when I, when I first uh, started, has he had to nudge me to, you know, um, yeah. because he had, he had seen something that I couldn't see. Right. So back to that. Mm -hmm. Right. Sure. Well, and I also think you make a good point too, because here's what the biggest challenge we have at Women Electronics. Nicolette, you nailed it. You said um, you have a certain idea in your mind. Like if you think of a woman's group, like you think of potentially maybe the women being against the men. That's not who we are. Right. There, not every woman's group is designed equal. <laughs> so we are not women in electronics, like trying to be against the men. We're trying to unite. Um, so it, it's been a lot of, uh, we almost think that sometimes we, we named ourselves wrong because like, we we don't want to be divisive. And, and if right. anybody, I honor and value um, all the relationships with the men and our leadership team and all the women. Like we, we don't come from a place of, oh, 
you know, trying to forge our way through or being against the men. Um, I would say I'm so proud of the women in our membership base because they are a very high level <clears throat> caliber person. Character is what I'm talking about, not just in title. People who value people, men and women. I would say that we got this, we have the sponsorships behind us because of the relationship of the men and the women in the industry mm -hmm. and, and having that spirit of collaboration and wanting to do better in the industry. But we have to acknowledge, um, Nicolette, it's, it, it, what you just said, it resonates with me because so many women don't join women electronics because they have this perception that, oh, I'm going to just align with women and the men are going to think I'm against them. It's not true. When you have leaders like Phil and Michael and all these other people, 20% of our base is men. We have men, male members too. <laughs> women. So it's just a, um, I think that if you, we have to acknowledge at the same time that we do have an issue with women rising up 8% is not enough. It's not good for the industry, right? It's not good moving forward. So what we need to do is, is tackle these issues together in a spirit of collaboration and, and not avoid, right? And not pretend it doesn't exist, but align together and be willing. This is part of the authenticity. It's hard to be that one who steps out and says what has to be said and, 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 and tries to make that all happen. We can't keep ignoring what's right in front of our faces, right? So that's what we're here to do, is just to keep going forward um, for the better of the industry. I might not see it in my lifetime, you know, parity in the electronic component industry, but my goal is really for this industry to thrive. Because if you think of this collegiate effort, it's not just about getting talent in this industry. It's about a passionate group of people who love this industry, love the people, and also think about technology in our world. This component industry is at the forefront, has the responsibility of innovating our industry. People underestimate that all the time, the meaning and the value of what we do. So sometimes what, what, what drives me forward is also that responsibility we have as an industry because we're impacting the entire globe. It's like people don't think about it. They don't know about the component industry, but we, if you take us away, you take all technology advancement away. So the way I look at it is um, it's, it, it's, it's way above and beyond just women getting leadership positions. This is like an industry advancing the world. And more soon. <laughs> <laughs> I said end bars <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, whenever you speak you gotta talk about Mars right right <laughs> right that's right I love yeah. Mars <laughs> so I think that is a wonderful and optimistic way to um to close out today but um Jackie I would love for you to let everybody know where they can learn more about women in electronics how they can join uh what you've got going on and coming up next Okay, well, um, I will just let everyone know that um, you can find us at womeninelectronics.com. If anybody wants to reach out to me for any questions, Jackie at womeninelectronics.com, please email me. Um, and we do have three major buckets I just want to throw out there because I didn't talk about the program too much, but we have leadership development. We have a chapter program where we come together quarterly for roundtabling with, you know, all of our membership base. And then we have a mentor, uh, mentorship program. So we mentioned mentorship. This is so critical. Um, one of the things we're most proud of is what we're doing is our mentorship program that's connecting an entire industry and it's connecting a globe. So this is more uh, global now. So would love for people to participate in women electronics, um, our current leaders, our rising leaders, and, and also to know that our current leaders are mentees just as much as their mentors. We all have to be learning and developing together. So anyway, thank you for having me on your program today. Oh, thank you so much for joining us, Jackie.